All right, Cat Kingdom. I have, I never read, I never take notes, but my guest is so talented. He does so many things that I actually wrote things down to introduce him. Because for nearly a decade, you've been entertaining radio audiences and as a co-host of Andy Cohen on Sirius. I love, love your show. We're going to talk about that. But you also have your own weekly radio show on Sirius, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Eastern. I was listening to that. It's so much fun. You're known to Broadway audiences as well super talented and you do your own stand-up comedy you're gonna be in LA right <laughs> December 22nd you do so much so first of all John Hill welcome to Ken on the Loose and I am so honored that you took the time to do this thank you for having me I'm honored to be here oh my god this is incredible I'm super super happy because I, I am honestly a huge fan of your work thank you for that intro that was it, nice so the first question is how do you manage to do it all <laughs> uh well, you know, I so my co-host is Andy, right. and you know he does. In addition to our show in the morning, he does Watch What Happens Live at night. Plus, he has, you know, he's the EP of Housewives and stuff. So I could never yeah. complain. <laughs> he has fifty times more things going on than I do. Right. So I, I would like to complain, but I won't because <laughs> you know keeps you busy, right? Yeah. So much fun. If he can handle what he can handle, I can definitely handle a radio oh show. God. I forgot to morning. mention that you also uh, have done uh, work as a producer, right? For yeah. Watch What Happens Live. Yeah, I worked at Watch What Happens Live for like four years. Wow. I was a writer there. How fun is that? It was great. It was the best job. So let me ask you a question about that show. What was the craziest celebrity have you ever seen there like did somebody ever go like completely crazy out of whack drunk or yes did something all the crazy? Time. can you tell us anything or you don't want to name names <laughs> no i don't mind naming names but it was an every night occurrence people got wasted do and they honestly get wasted um appropriately they get wasted <laughs> not inappropriate i mean they get they get sufficiently wasted yeah uh -huh. ba back in the day i think it was a little more loose i think now things are probably a little bit more responsible you know but yeah because when i watch it honestly of course it's everybody's dream to be there but i always cringe a little bit because i'm like i'm not sure if i would want to like get drunk and wasted like for millions of people to watch it's kind of like a, a, a shit fest there right that's what makes it so fun that's right? why it's a great show yeah. yeah so speaking of of people getting wasted i i was looking at a little clip that you guys put out about on the radio show you, Andy was talking to you about the latest episode of The Housewives. Mm -hmm. I think it was the latest. I don't. I don't even know. I don't. Don't. Beverly don't, Hills. Don't. Yeah, Beverly yeah. Hills. Did you finally watch it? Yes. Uh, what did you? Because I love Denise Richards. So I, I love have Denise. Add, I love, love, love Denise. Yeah. Uh, I love her. Why did she go back on the <laughs> show? Do you think she was? She looked a little out of whack, right? She looked messed up. Yeah. Right. I think, I don't know. I think there's two different questions. Why she went back on the show, I don't know the answer. She probably just wanted to go to the dinner and I don't know if she necessarily <laughs> planned on being as right. altered as she appeared, but also in the world of Housewives, maybe it was, maybe she that was all part of her plan you never know because definitely yeah. she's what people are talking about i know yeah. and I, I mean i love her so much and when she got out of the show i was actually happy because yeah. i thought you know she was out of place there yeah because she was the one like real actor you know she had like more well lisa rinna oh yeah that's um, true i and like the, lisa and rinna the, uh, right and also the one from uh days of our lives i forget her name uh, I for oh uh eileen eileen i are, love eileen these are real actresses they're too. all lined up to yeah. to come by denise, the way to no come. offense to denise but denise you know yeah i mean i think she belongs <laughs> on housewives for sure <laughs> and do. as an actress yeah <laughs> It's I just I cringed when I saw the episode because I really love her and I'm like, what's going on, Denise? Well, you with know? those shows, you go go at your own peril. Yeah. You know, if you she didn't have to get drunk before yeah. the show. You know, she you exactly know, she, these exactly. are adults. They I know they know decisions. what they're doing. Yeah. Right? They know what they're doing. Now uh, let's let's rewind the story a little because I, I have so many questions. I'm getting ahead of the game. Because you've been uh, uh, the co-host with Andy Cohen for like almost 10 years now, right? Yeah, Can eight. you t Eight. That's incredible. Yeah. Can you like rewind for people that are listening and maybe don't know your work? Don't know. How did you end up there? Um, yeah. Well, so 
I guess so. Andy and I first met in 2003. We were boyfriends for a couple years. Ah, uh, I did not know that. Yeah, oh, cool. And then we were better friends than boyfriends. And then we started working together. I was working as a producer at Bravo for a long time. Then I worked to watch Robbins Live. And then I started as a correspondent at SiriusXM uh, for Entertainment Weekly, just kind of like being a guest on some shows. And then when uh, Andy did a deal with Sirius, he knew I loved it and I was already kind of doing it there. And so he gave me my own show and made me his co-host. Oh my God. Yeah. That's like a dream job, right? Yeah, it definitely has become a dream job. I, Yeah, definitely. And I like that you said, because I didn't know you guys dated. I think it's so nice and civilized because it's very rare, right? I mean, this is a, a podcast about sex, dating, relationships. And usually it's a shit show, especially <laughs> when you break up with someone. It's so rare yeah. that you meet people that are actually manage to transition to actually continuing each other's lives and being friends. It's very rare. Yeah. It's my problem, though, maybe, because I'm friends with all my exes. Really? Yeah. Can you give us any tips on that? <laughs> I don't know. How I think does it, that happen? I think it might have to do with my sign, maybe. What's your sign? Double Scorpio, Pisces Moon. I'm I'm a Pisces, but Scorpio is like yeah. I don't know. I think once maybe it's like when, I I don't ever fall out of love. I think once I'm in, I'm Aww. in. Yeah, but yeah, That's but not so in a sad. Sweet. It's like you know, in a good way. I just feel like I'm close to these people. Oh my god! You know, so. Yeah. It's funny saying that because I'm a lot like that too. People even ask me like, because I, I, of, of course I've dated my share of crappy men. Yeah, well, me too, by but the way. I, yeah, but I don't, like when it's over, even if they do something horrible to me, Yeah. I, I'm still, I communicate and I wish them the best. And, and a lot of my friends are like, Kat, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know, why do you talk? And I'm like, because at some point they were a part of my life for one reason or another. Sure. I don't see, even if they made a mistake, it's on them. I don't see a reason to like be nasty like most people are when they like break up a relationship, they want to murder the person. Right. And you don't want to, I don't want to carry it around on me hating someone all day long. So even if I never want to see them again, yeah. I hope they're doing, Same. they found something Same. good. Because yeah. I don't want that on me. And I got to tell you, and I'm going to tell my listeners a uh, 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 behind the scenes, something crazy that I never ever did before. And I want your opinion. Okay. Uh, I started dating someone just like a little over a month ago. Uh -huh. And usually, you know, guys are very intimidated by the podcast, right? Because they're like, oh, well, you're going to talk about me on the podcast. Right. No, no, no. You're like the Taylor Swift of the podcast. You talk about <laughs> all. And so, uh, yeah, it's a problem. Then. So I met Adam, who I'm not going to show uh, <laughs> his face or anything. Like maybe six weeks we've been dating. And he was totally game. He's like, I, I, I love it. I'm proud of you. So when I said I was going to come interview, I'm like, do you want to come over and watch? And, 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 and he was like, yeah, sure. I never did that before. I Usually I keep my, my dates, yeah. like my boyfriend's like really far away from my work. And my best friend told me, oh, my God, you're crazy. It's too much too soon. It's TMI. It's you guys just started dating. Do you think I'm I'm being crazy having him here listening to all this no. stuff or not? <laughs> no, I think it's a good it's a good test. And also, like, look at his face is like that. <laughs> yeah. If And also, if even if you weren't here, he could always listen to it. I, yeah. I've never had any issues because I don't think I would say anything. I don't say anything that is a secret, you know, or I, and I even no matter how mad I get at someone, yeah. I don't really get mad at people. I don't ever. Um, use podcasts or the radio to yeah. to mess with my life. Yeah, but do you talk about your personal life at all? On sometimes, the shows? sometimes, but I don't name yeah. names or anything. No, same. But I'll say I went yeah. out, I met someone, yeah. or any, or you know. Same. Yeah, I don't name yeah. names. But I don't also but... sell the person. I don't say <laughs> they pissed me off last night. Here's what they did. Can you believe it? Let's take yeah. your calls and find out what you think. It's more like, you know, I only. Yeah, support. Like, yeah, like me. Yes, I, I do talk about things that happen, but of course I would never name a name or yeah. like specifics about the person. But I yeah. definitely talk about like if the person is a total, you know, <laughs> douche. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they might end up being an episode. Well, this is part of you and this is part of what you do. And yeah. they and this is like if they're going to date you, they might as well. Yeah. You know, see so behind the scenes. in your case, because uh, you do two radio shows now, not yeah. only you're the co-host with Andy, you have your own radio show on series, which is super cool. Yeah. And you have your stand up. Yeah. We're going to talk about that in a second. Hold on, because I have a lot of questions about that. I love it. <laughs> but do you think the fact that you do all these radio shows, your work is so public, makes your dating life 
more difficult? Are people, in, like in my case, do you think they're intimidated? They're afraid you're going to talk about that? Do, like when they don't know you, or you, you think it makes it easier? It has any impact on your dating life at all? I don't think it has. No. I, no. Ah. I, yeah. Because oh. I really, I'm making jokes about the news. Yeah. I'm not really... Um, trying to you know some people are on the radio or on podcasts to kind of be like reality tv type of stuff i'm yeah it's just you know mine stuff is comedy based you know so you never hit like meet someone and they're like oh you're gonna talk about me if, if they we... do they don't say it to me <laughs> if they're worried about it i think once you know me you're not too worried about that you seem like really chill like really nice and sweet and friendly i think so i've only had one issue where somebody did go back and listen to something and it was like, um, but it wasn't anything bad. I'm trying to think of what it was. It was kind of like a year ago. <laughs> uh, and I think I said on like on the air, I said like, we're not that serious yet, but he thought maybe we were more oh. serious. But I was saying that yeah. to like, in a way, to keep it like yeah. anonymous or something. I didn't uh -huh. want people, because once people, it's more like the listeners, once they yeah. say, oh, you're dating someone, they'll go through your Instagram, they'll find it, they try they'll to DM find him. Yeah, I so I was saying like, oh, it's not that serious, it's chill to kind of protect him. And he took it as, oh, we're not that serious. Aww. And I was saying like, I don't want the were listeners you, to though? think. Were you We weren't. <laughs> 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 no, we ended up no it didn't really work so, out <laughs> so uh, what's your status now are you single are you mingling single. you're single. single and but i'm trying to mingle yeah yeah, yeah. so you're 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 open-minded available yeah definitely yeah i saw a clip i forgot the name of the guest oh my god it was this really cool girl that was on the radio show a few days ago and she said something that i love she was like it's almost the end of the year and for all people that are like in situationships which uh -huh. are so many out there this is a great time to like okay i shouldn't start a new year in a situation and i loved that mm. because one of my best friends has been dragging on for like a little yeah. over a year in a situation with a guy that doesn't want to be in a relationship they're just basically just banging just having sex and i like that the girl said that yeah like just cut the cord and she said coincidentally she said december 7th just say okay that's it yeah do you like that idea well, i'm just trying to think like cuffing season right we're like in it and this is when people are all cup you know coupling up they're yeah. it's like the holidays they want to have someone around and then yeah i think you need to start the new year you're gonna people are gonna break up with those things by like may yeah so you might as well start a situation just decide what you want and get out of it if it's lingering i agree with you do, do you think it's a trend like that people are doing that to each other we've been talking a lot about it on the podcast because of the you know dating apps like people order each other like pizza there's so much variety out there <laughs> so like even if people they lie to you like i want to be in a relationship but they actually you know just want to lead you on and right. see what else is out there do you see that as well a lot or not yeah and also, we're in L.A. I think people change their mind a lot. You think it's an L.A. thing? Uh, sometimes. Well, not necessarily. I think what you're saying about dating apps and a lot of guys, I think they, they would want to want a relationship. Yeah. But I think a lot of guys, they want to keep moving. Yeah. You know? Most people. So so yeah. for someone out there that actually wants a relationship, what do you say? Like, you think L.A. makes it tougher? I was going to ask if you yeah. thought L.A. or New York or it's the same shit show or if you think L.A. is worse. Different shit shows, but both shit shows. I think L.A. Yeah. is worse because people don't know what they want. People <laughs> in New York at least know what they want and they have and they will at least like be direct with you if they yeah. want to move on. But here I think people think linger so? on. They'll flake yeah. out. They'll just kind of. Yeah. Be, hang around. It's like you never know what month it is here. It's always the so same So you month. think the dating scene here is more complicated than New York? Mm, I don't know if it's more complicated, but it is more annoying. Yeah. Uh, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. What do you think? I t you know, it's fun because I, 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 I don't know about New York because I've been there just to visit. Yeah. And I used to live in Miami. And I think Miami is the worst. Why? The worst. 
Because I think most people in Miami are want to go there to party, yeah. to have fun. There's tons and tons and tons of hookers, <laughs> co- escorts, and the rich guys, you know, obviously, all they want to yeah. do is like, fuck you. Even like the gay scene, like all my gay friends complain about it. Like, because right. there's all these gay rich guys that go there yeah. and they literally lie to you. Like, they, they, you know, they just use you and toss you. I just think it's so chaotic that I guess when I moved back to LA the past two years, I, and yeah, it's been a shit show too. Not before you had him, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's listening to everything. But I didn't feel it was as bad as Miami. I feel like Miami, everybody just uses each other, literally. Right. So I don't know, but I honestly, I maybe New York, because I know New Yorkers are more like matter of fact, right? Yeah. So that might be an easier dating market. I'm not sure. Hmm. I think it might be a little bit. L.A. just seems like um, people are just lazy and flaky. <laughs> In ge- and and everybody says everybody says that about L.A., right? Yeah. And it breaks my heart because I love L.A. <laughs> I love L.A. too. You have to once once your expectations are to to know that tendency with people yeah. here, you can kind of weed out the people yeah. that suck. Do you think? Uh, dating being gay or dating being straight is the same stuff or does it make any difference? I don't think it's the same. You don't? No, I think it's a whole different follow You do? Acts. Yeah. Yeah. Like what? Well, my straight friends, I have a best straight friend who um, his dating experience is totally different. I think guys can find each other really easily here. Yeah. Like how? Um, either on an app or okay. just Just in out. bars and stuff? Yeah. And then they... I think they can find each other and hook up and meet easily. They're more, more easily. comfortable with it too, right? Women are more complicated. I think maybe, and and you know my f- I, my street friends can't you know go out and hook up uh, yeah. as easily as as gay guys yeah. can, and and not that all gay guys want to do that, but right, just right. like uh, my 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 best street friend is always kind of like. On, he's looking for a great girl always, but can't find one. And all really? my straight girlfriends are always mm. looking for a great straight guy, yeah. but can't find same, one. So same. I don't know. But no, I don't know any gay guys who have a hard time finding each other. I know they have a hard time finding the right guy. Yeah, that's Everyone has that problem. Yeah. No one can find the right one. But at least gay guys can sort of find something. Yeah, I, th- that's a really good way to put it. I completely agree with you. I think if you're trying to find something to have fun, it's easier if you're trying to find like yeah. a... So what are are you looking for a relationship right now or are you just wa- just want to have fun? I want to... A want lot of people DM'd <laughs> me that, by the way. Really? <laughs> yes. When I said I was going to... I started getting like a bunch... Of course, all my gay friends. All my gay friends. Like, oh my God, is he available? Is he available? <laughs> I want to come. I want to come. I want to co-host. I'm like... <laughs> I'm available. I th- I want to want a relationship. Uh, and a part of me thinks I've already been in love with the people. I, I don't know. I couldn't. I, I feel like I've had such a great few ex boyfriends. I don't know if I could find better ones, but I know I need to Aww, get over that's that. That's so sweet that you said. So yeah. why doesn't it work? Like because you seem like to like you said mm-hmm. you continue uh, having a good relationship with them. You guys become friends. Yeah. And you say like the sweetest thing things about them. Is it always you that breaks up or? Um, no, it's been mostly situational. One of them was we were uh, I was working on another coast and it was didn't work. We were long distance. Um, when Andy and I dated, I was twenty five. He was thirty five. We and then we now we work together. We were better friends than boyfriends. The other one, it was long distance and we were just like it mm-hmm. wasn't the right time. And you try? Do you try? You go back and forth a lot, yeah. right? Between LA and New York, all the time, right? Yeah. So that yeah. that makes it a, li- a little harder. But I'm here more in LA. Yeah, but it. Do you think it it, it makes it a little difficult to date, like to have a serious relationship if you never know where you're gonna be? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I I want to want a relationship, um, but I'm I'm <laughs> yeah I'm not in any rush because I, oh, I really I don't like, like to break up with. I don't want to go through a breakup. Yeah, I know. That's the, I know. I that hate them. Same. So I don't ever. Same. It's almost like I never want to. I have a friend who doesn't want to get a puppy because she doesn't want it to oh die. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! I know. <laughs> that's it's. I know. <laughs> I'm kind of. I don't want to get a relationship because I don't want to have to ever. It's break funny up. that you said that because for the longest time I was the same because I had my heart broken a few times. I was married yeah. for a really long time, and then you know that's how the podcast started because. 
after being i was married for 14 years cat on the loose cat on the loose and then i'm like i started literally talking about like the shitty man that i was dating after getting yeah. married because i didn't know how to date yeah and i kept getting tangled up with horrible men now yeah. i laugh about it but if you listen to the first episodes you cringe you know you're <laughs> like oh my god why did you put up with this shit like the creepiest man in the world and then when I started Cat on the Loose, I was like, you know what? Saying, I don't want to go through this anymore. Like, you trust someone, da, da, da. And they put you through so much shit. But then from doing the podcast, and, and of course, I ch it changed me a lot. I think if we give up on love, if we give up on finding the right person first, all these assholes win. I know. You're right. You know what I mean? Like, okay, You're congratulations. Right. Let's all be assholes. Let's all use each other. So I, I'm kind of like determined. I'm like, you know what? You're not going to win. I'm going to like stay in this game yeah. until I find like, because there are nice people out there. Totally. I'm not discouraged. I know there are great people. I just want to make sure. I don't want to lock myself into something that, I just want to be upfront and honest from the beginning and I want a really good friend mm -hmm. and that's what I know. Yeah. I'm not looking to like never settle down. Yeah. You know, I that's a Yeah. You know, I love being in love. Yes. Yeah, I'm a same. good boyfriend. Same. You must be. But do you think. think but of course you're very successful and your work is very public. Mm -hmm. Do you always wonder, like let's say you meet somebody at a bar tonight? Do you always wonder, do they really like me or they want to be around no, me? No, because I'm poor still. Even if I'm, <laughs> even if I'm public, I'm not rich. Same. So I, they're not looking. They're, I'm not, there's nothing to really get from me. But, you know, people <laughs> like they see, oh, uh, yeah, he's the host with any call. He goes to these events. He yeah. inter interviews celebrities. No, no. Even if you're not like rich, like, you know, whatever, yeah. making millions, maybe you never feel like they are around me because they want to go to an event with me or they want to meet a celebrity. I don't know. You never feel that way. I I don't hang around people who are like that. <laughs> awesome. I, I, I don't think I would ever spend time with anybody who would be... But how do you know? You have the instinct. See. You can see. Yeah. I, I have the worst oh, yeah, instinct about people. I make mistakes yeah. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to learn from you. We need to hang out. I have low tolerance. I'm not even <laughs> yeah. looking. I'm not even trying to size anybody up. I just don't have tolerance for um, bullshit. I'm too tired. Right? Yeah, same. I don't want the <laughs> users. I really don't want the yeah. users. I don't yeah. want anybody that gets impressed by, <laughs> you know, fluff. Yeah, I also don't, you know, I'm not like, uh, I'm in that world, I guess, but I'm not like obsessed with it. You know, I'm yeah, not like. I love that. You, yeah. You're down to earth. You I seem think like so. super down to earth. I think so. Like I invited you. That's that's. It's funny because you know I interview all kinds of people, all kinds of celebrities, all kinds of experts, and you see by the way people respond, like yeah, and and how they show up, if they show up in an entourage or not, if they show up on time or not, no. if they're late, if they make a bunch of them. You you <laughs> kind of know the vibe how the person is gonna be when you meet them. Do you? Does that happen to you as well on your radio show? Definitely. Yeah. The, right. The people who are the most successful, the most confident. Um, are the lowest maintenance. Yeah, I totally. Think. I agree. Yeah. I it, could not agree with you more. And once What Happens Live, it was very much like the people who were, you know, uh, maybe d desperate to become more famous. Mm -hmm. They had 10 people with them just for the shoes or whatever. Oh, my God. You know, and it, everything know. was... Um, high maintenance, but Meryl <sighs> Streep walked in with nobody. Just yeah, sat they down, don't did care, the thing. Right? Yeah, I know. I love it. I, another clip that I saw that Andy Cohen put there. Uh, he he said about Julia Roberts. He's like, she showed up. Yeah. She, I think she was the only celebrity that I ever had here that didn't request like this touch up, touch blah ups. blah blah during the break. And funny enough, I remember many years ago, I was working on a, a TV series and her husband is a cameraman. Right, Danny. And so she showed up like to say hi or give him a kiss, whatever, lunchtime. And at first I didn't even recognize it because she was insanely down to her. She was like in a ponytail, jeans, T-shirt, yeah. like, you know, not made up at all. She was like literally hanging out with the crew. Like just be, and I'm, I, and I remember that like the people that don't need the the fluff, they're yeah. the most successful. That and it, uh, it, it, it's always the case, right? And sometimes I see these other girls that are not that successful. They're like worry about every little detail is like too much sometimes. Right. Well, like also, you know, I I come from the Broadway world, and this is I, I'm 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 just working also. You know, I'm trying to like 
you know, I show up for my radio show. We're live at 7 a.m. Not that it's not glamorous or great, but it also isn't really. Yeah. So I'm. it's not yeah. like... Um, yeah, I'm trying to like do good work. Yeah, no, you do fantastic work. So speaking of work, let's talk about your work a little more before we run out of time. You do the stand up. I w- I'm gonna go by the you way. You have to come. I'm gonna the one twenty second. I told Adam, I'm like, I gotta be too. there. Yeah. Well, well, I don't know. Are we if still gonna still be dating <laughs> on the twenty <laughs> You're putting him to work too. I like. That. I know. I was like, babe, just do some like behind the scenes and stuff. And he's he's so like. I have to say one thing about him. I I do I do know he listened to a bunch of past episodes, but all the shit the other guys do wrong. Uh-huh. He doesn't do it. Like, he's the biggest gentleman. I even joke with him, like, you should open a gentleman's school because he's so thoughtful. This is so, so nice. I know. He's so thoughtful. How everything, long have you been going out? Se- five, six weeks or something. But oh, we were nice. saying, like, it feels like so much longer. Yeah. Because he's the sweetest. He actually thinks about, like, let me do something that you need. You can't see him, but he's very handsome. <laughs> tall, oh, thank you. <laughs> nice guy. Yeah, no, I'm not going to show. Because people know so much about my life. Yeah. I never, ever, ever publish anything about my life. I never even told my listeners. When I'm dating, I never tell yeah. anybody. It, this is the first time. Because I think he deserves it. Because he's really, like, you know... uh explaining to me inside my head why I'm not with the, with the assholes that I was before. Because he's like the, I think that's for men. I don't care if you're gay, if you're a guy, whoever you're dating, people should like uh, treat each other with kindness and respect, right? It shouldn't be yeah. all about you, right? Yeah. And and Hello. Adam is like that. Like the whole day he thinks about like, what does she need? And to me, it's a new one, <laughs> honestly, because I've dated my share of narcissists, you know? They're everywhere out here. Right. Know? And you have cool sunglasses, too. He looks good. Got good style. Yeah, he, he got good style, Wait, right? Wait, where'd you meet, may I ask? Uh, yes. No, I will. I will. Like, I'm super organic. We met at Facebook dating. Oh, I didn't even know. Fa- I don't uh, even have Facebook. I did not know it existed either. Like, my friend was like, I w- we were having dinner, and my friend was doing Facebook. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he was like, I'm Facebook dating. I'm like, Facebook <laughs> dating? And then I took a look because it's free because uh-huh. I don't want da- right. to uh, pay for dating apps. And then I found him. And then, you know what he said to me on our first date? This is really funny. He was like, you know, Kat, I have to tell you something. Many months ago... I saw you on Bumble, <laughs> but I saw your pictures. I had a picture of myself in a bathing suit on a yacht. Mm. And he's like, I thought you were too bougie. I thought you were too much of a snob. <laughs> and I didn't <laughs> swipe you. <laughs> so now I saw you on Facebook dating. I was like, okay, let me give her a chance. <laughs> I need to go to Brazil too, by the way. Oh my God, let's go. Wow, let's I've never go. Been. A lot of super hot, They're all hot. Guys. Why are they all hot? So one of my best friends, gay friends, he's hot as hell. He's a, a stylist <laughs> in Paris, but he's from Brazil. He was one that sent me a message about you. Like, I'll Get introduce up. you guys. Yeah. I'll introduce. He was like, who is this guy? Cat, are you kidding Does me? Does he want citizenship? I'll give it to him. He's hot as fuck, I have to <laughs> tell you. Like, he, I mean, you are. That was one of my questions to you. Like, I'm running out of time. Oh, my God. It's I okay. have 10 million more questions. How do you stay in such great shape? I don't drink or do drugs. Same. Number one. I love that. <laughs> You're sober, right? Yeah. That's incredible. I love that. How long? Almost three years. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. I'm getting to that point because I was married to an alcoholic. Oh, God. Yeah. Bless. And he died. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's a whole other episode. But, um, yeah, so I, I only drink wine because mm-hmm. I'm half French and I love my wine. Maybe one or two glasses. Yeah. But I want to get to the point that I'm like, you know what? I don't even need the well, wine. So it, whatever. It's all a, everyone's personal yeah. journey. But um, you don't drink and do drugs. But yeah. I, can I ask, like, how? Because I saw your pictures. Your body is out. Or like, I mean, talk about putting pressure on people that want to date you. Because well, your body's insane. Thank you. Hopefully insane in a good way. Insane in a um, fabulous <laughs> way. <laughs> like, oh, my God. This is, and Adam, his body's really good. <laughs> yeah, he's my, yeah, he looks great. Yeah. Um, I wanted to get as healthy as I could possibly get. I lost my dad when he passed away. I was I kind of looked at what his health was like. And when oh. I turned 45, I just kind of like. And you look much younger, to, by the way. Thank you. you well, now really I'm 46. Do. Wow. But uh, when is your birthday? October 23rd. October 23rd. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's Scorpio. Yeah. When are so you? April, March. No, March 6th. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm Pisces. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm like super sweet, very chill. Yeah. And he's Capricorn, and usually Capricorn, they're very like uh, type A, right? I like a Capricorn. I, I never dated a Capricorn before. They're good. So, yeah? They're good. Okay, so you think Organized, it's right? I, I don't know. Are you organized? But he seems very organized. <laughs> I'm a little chaotic. He seems very chill, very organized. Water sign. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you know, the artist. My yeah. life is like all over yeah. the place. And he's been like so patient with, with me. So far, so good. He gets an A, an A for effort. I have good vibes. Yeah. So how do you, what do you do for workout? Oh, uh, well, I do Olympic weightlifting and a little CrossFit. Wow. Yeah. Every all day. The, almost, yeah. I d you're supposed to take a day off at yeah, least, but like I like to do muscles. something. Yeah, I, like, I have big muscles. I like to do something every day. If I don't yeah. lift, I at least, you know, run outside. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So let's talk about the, the show. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, you, you play the organ. I play the, the, the piano, piano, keyboard. The yeah. Keyboard, yeah, keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> and you come up with these songs. Uh -huh, I write They're them. so cool. Like, Thank how do you, you come up with that? I um, was watching one. I was laughing. Like it's so. You guys gotta go to his Instagram and check it out. It's thank you so super much. cute. It's so fun. It makes me really very happy. organic. I love doing it. I've always written songs, but I always was. Uh, I felt like um, I couldn't read music well enough, or I wasn't the best musician. And once I forgot all of that, and it was like, there's no rules. Just use the talent you were given. I was able yeah. to finish songs, write them all. Now I write songs every day. So the whole so tell us about the stand up. You like you tell yeah. jokes, you tell the songs. W what's the story of the? You were banned from TikTok. No, not me. Was I banned from TikTok? What, what was that? One of your songs or something? You wrote such an X rated oh, song. Oh, oh, right. It is kind of X rated. Why? Can you sing a, a little <laughs> bit? <laughs> or no. tell us what it's about. Uh, it's a country song. A country. Why it's, was? Why is it so it bad? Is it because the joke is kind of that it is really filthy. It's a graphics can you tell song. us now you have joke? to come see the show ah. you can it's still on tiktok the song is actually on tiktok but it i don't think anyone's found it yet it's just very dirty Why did, i don't know somebody told me it was banned on tiktok okay i'm gonna try to find it no you it. can find it i'll send we it to can, you okay okay it should be banned on tiktok it should it definitely <laughs> but not what is it about Instagram. can you tell us what it's about fucking <laughs> fucking <laughs> like that yeah <laughs> I think that's a very healthy, important conversation. <laughs> fucking yeah, it's a beautiful. It's a beautiful song about you know. <laughs> I love it. Fucking in a car. Right, but so you sing it on your 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 stand up. On yeah, your show? I sing that. I sing um, a song about my dog who's homophobic. Um, that I heard. That's hilarious. Why do you think your dog is homophobic? Uh, because when I took him to Fire Island, he <laughs> was around a bunch of gay guys and they traumatized him so bad by their conversations about Broadway that he was self-harming. And um, What kind of dog? He's a little nine-pound chihuahua. Oh, he's I really had a nine pound, I, I had a tiny little chihuahua. He passed away. Now oh. I have a, a three-year-old Labrador. Yeah. Oh, I love my dog so much. Yeah. Uh, I sing a song about... Um, Gay fashion. I sing a song about like times when I'm on the radio and I've like in, ex embarrassed myself. Uh huh. That's a little chunk of the show. Oh my god! Yeah. I cannot wait. Because we're live on the air. On yeah, that's... there is no editing, so I've embarrassed me over eight years. But I've you know what? I, uh, I I admire that a lot. I used to do a radio show before the podcast. I love radio because I yeah. know how tough it is. Yeah, I w I used to be on air for like four hours, and you got to like. <laughs> And so many times you say shit that we do, don't, right? You don't want to say, but it, it keeps going. Yeah. So this is why when I started the podcast, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do 100% organic. I mm -hmm. am not going to edit yeah. because so many people are sick of like, you know, the cut, 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 cut. Even like reality TV is not reality anymore. I agree. Right? So now I let it roll. And sometimes, yeah, I put the, my foot on my mouth. Sometimes I do great. Sometimes it's shitty. <laughs> but that's how I grew an audience because I think people really appreciate yeah. like being real. You Me know? too. I think there's it's more exciting. Yeah, right. If, if people don't think that it's been censored at all. Yeah, because a lot yeah. of now I, I know you guys are saying everybody has a podcast nowadays. Yes, everybody, even like grandmas, all the celebrities, <laughs> nah, nah. and people think it's easy, right? Everybody comes like, oh, I'm gonna start a podcast and I'm gonna have thousands of listeners, and it's like an uphill battle. It's hard, especially for people like me who are not a celebrity. I started from zero. You and, seem like a celebrity. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. But uh, no, I started from zero, and just like I yeah. said, I I feel like I'm growing up such a big audience 
because I put myself out there. Yeah. I tell people my stories. I make mistakes. Yeah. You know, I fuck it up. I curse a lot. But and also, you're consistent. Yeah. That's the other thing. I think if you yeah. keep showing up and you're consistent yeah. with what you're doing, people know what you're doing. And, and even if it lags or you feel like no one's listening, keep going. They'll yeah, come back. Right? Yeah. yeah. But I think being real is what yeah. the audience identifies with, right? Absolutely. People don't want to hear rehearsed shit or... Um, planned stuff. They they want to yeah. hear natural reactions, and it doesn't even have to. Honestly, Andy and I know this too. It doesn't even have to be a celebrity interview. It can even if it doesn't matter who it is. If someone's talking about something you want to listen to, yeah. people want to hear it. Yeah. No, it's interesting that you said that because before you got here, I was mentioning to Adam when you invite somebody for the show and tell me if you feel the same way. You never know how that person is going to translate in person right like, oh my gosh if someone's <laughs> funny on the internet it doesn't mean they can actually speak in public right and some people like when you when you meet them it's like a huge disappointment for yeah. many reasons like they're boring or they have nothing to say or they're yeah. just shy or they're too rude or they have no energy yeah. and vice versa but you never know what you're gonna get right yeah so with me i just try to i think no matter what anybody brings we're gonna do the show we're gonna do yeah. and yeah. Sometimes it is low energy. Sometimes it's I boring. think a lot, of, but this is why it's so hard to be a great host. And this is why you guys are so fantastic at what you do. Because even if the person you're interviewing sucks a little bit, you <laughs> got to keep going and make it exciting. Well, yeah, because we can't stop. Audience. Yeah, like people are listening. You know, because <laughs> we can see people when they call in, we see the screen yeah. light up. We're like, wow, people are literally listening. So we can't. Do just you get shit like, uh, so do you get the calls? Do you, do you, get like uh questions from people like live on the show yeah they'll you know they go through a producer first and they'll put uh -huh. them up on the screen they'll say you know tammy in idaho yeah has a question about so and so and so tennis elbow do you have uh one person that you interview that th that pops in your mind they're like oh my god this person was really really fantastic eric andre oh really do you know eric andre yeah yeah he was great he oh. came and just like showed up ready to have a great time oh how awesome. comedians are the best oh yeah live performers yeah they're the best they know how to they know how speak to put on live a good show. put on a did good you show. ever have anybody if you don't want to say the name it's okay but did you ever have somebody that showed up and you were like what the fuck is this person doing here yes all the time all the time <laughs> yeah because the other thing andy this is more andy than me but um you know people who are on a press tour uh -huh. and they have to talk to whoever is there about yeah. their book or whatever yeah. um, and they don't necessarily want to be there. Yeah, I don't like those. Yeah. I don't want to have people that don't really like want to be here. Yeah. Or if people yeah. don't want to have fun Yeah. or if they want to take themselves too seriously. Yeah. But uh, I'm, that's just me being a bitch too. I think it's probably fine. I agree with you. I'm really processed. So let me ask you a tough question yeah. and if you don't want to ask, that's totally okay. When, um, you know, uh, now, of course, the Housewives and Andy and Bravo is like a multi-gazillion dollar franchise. Yeah. I am a huge admirer of his work because he started from zero and he built it up. I think he's obviously a dream, a fantastic. But so when I heard Bethany, like, you know, shitting on, I, and I <laughs> admire her. Listen, I admire her as a woman because she was selling cookies at a grocery store. She parlayed it into a multi-million dollar. I know because I do the same like with my little brands. And I know how tough it is, you know, it's, to, to get there. And so when she was c complaining like about Bravo, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that and hire a lawyer. I don't even know what the fuck she said. She talks so much. It drives me crazy, although I love her as a woman. <laughs> but I'm, I was like, I actually wrote on her Instagram. I'm like, dude, don't spit on the plate. Like the only you had this exposure on TV. He put you on the show. Don't do this to me. Like, don't come now and say that they're exploiting women. That is too much. I thought she was being, that's just me. And please disagree if you want to. I thought she was being so ungrateful. I wanted to smack her. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's well said. Thank you. Really? <laughs> honestly? Yeah. I, I, listen, I didn't watch a whole lot of her on TV. I, at times I've met her, I thought she was really funny and entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Um, this, I can't put myself in the, um, through the thinking of what, it seems a little bit like, um, 
like psychosis or something i think it's a yeah. men- uh, something's mentally um like kind of off because there. to me honestly like we know the minute you you put your project on tv it goes from zero to millions of viewers right so like you're selling yeah. cookies at a grocery store if bravo says i'm gonna put you on on tv you're like magnify whatever it is that you're doing so i i it just breaks my heart like even n- okay now you don't need the money now you don't want to be on bravo anymore whatever your reason is I, yeah. I, it just broke my heart that she was saying any kind of shit about the show and about him. Yeah. Because m- let's say we don't know, but if she never would have been there, maybe she wouldn't be as successful by now. And I believe in gratitude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Listen, I think <laughs> everything you're saying makes a lot of sense. I think you're saying it really well. I, but I, I'm not involved, so I no, don't know. No, me neither. But I'm like, just like as an expectator. I, I can't imagine... Go- I, I don't. I can't really follow the logic of any of that. Um, yes, and, and the only thing that I ever saw was um, when she was eating those like shellfish in her hotel room and the crab legs and stuff. Did you ever see that? <laughs> and that's when yes. I thought something is. And I've is been to rehab little... before, so I, I've seen a lot of crazy shit. But I thought this is. You've been to rehab for alcohol. Uh, for worse Drug. than that. Oh, so, okay. I, but I just was like, this is some. This is a version yeah. of insanity yeah. that I d- can't yeah. even. I can't relate yeah. to. So I'm out. And I because obviously I don't know Andy in person, and you do you know him really really well, and he seems like an incredibly sweet guy. Like he gives a ton of people a ton of opportunity, and also really fair. Yeah, um, yeah, and patient. And oh my god, talk about patient! Like and, he's and a father to these crazy a, bitches. Well, he, he's impatient. But he's, in terms of his soul, he is a yeah. kind person, and he's not like, yeah, he's yeah. a great, he's a great friend too. Yeah. So I, I, and I think a great friend to her, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, yeah. That's I why think it's a gratitude shocking. goes a long way, right? If somebody yeah. gives you a chance, just zip dot com. Well, yeah, unless something really terrible has been done, and then, yeah. but I don't think that's the case. Exactly. No, to- I had to ask you about because it really dr- drives me crazy and people talk trash about a job that they got. I'm super grateful for everything. But anyways, uh, we're running out of time. I want to ask you about one of the top um, celebrity news of the year, if you followed mm. it and your opinion. Yeah, okay. Scandoval. Oh, yeah, I heard of it. You heard of it. Do you, do you watch the show yeah, at all? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm up to date. Did you think the backlash on Tom was fair or just a little too much? Mm, <laughs> I think it was kind of fair. Same. Sorry. Same. I, I, you know, he's still on the show. He's filming. Yeah. He's, he has a podcast now. Maybe I you know, can have right? him on. Uh, yeah. I think he's going to be fine. Like, that's he's what, already fine, that's right? That's what happens. But it was pretty, you, pretty shitty, right? Yeah. I don't feel that bad for him. Oh my god, I, me neither. I really don't. I think, like, listen, I am a pretty nice guy, and people tell me to go kill myself after the like. People are just mean oh, online. Oh come on, no so way. Like, yeah, like people, are, people are just mean online. So I don't think it matters. I think everyone's just gonna get hated on on the internet. The internet oh, for is sure. not a real. You place. can be the nicest person in the world. There's always gonna be the haters, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, so I think I'm not surprised that happened. He seems uh, to have a good perspective on it. He's moving forward with his Do life. Do you think the show should have cut him off? I mean, I understand its ratings. I totally understand that, but... No, because I think <sighs> he didn't show, at least, listen, I'm just a viewer, but he didn't seem to show signs of maybe um, not being able to handle it. Yeah. You know, he seemed yeah. like he signed, he did, he's signed up to be on a reality show. He faced the consequences. And if he seemed maybe he needed to go... If he was getting super depressed or yeah. self-harming, then maybe yeah. put him off the show. But he seems to be, like, rolling with it. I think I would have pu- – me, I think I would have put him off the show kind of like, uh, you know, punish. Like, dude, you cross all the lines of human decency. Well, but it's just documenting human life. Uh, the show is not yeah, promoting. Yeah. It, it's just no, totally. documenting yeah. someone's behavior. Yeah. Yes, they can s- – I mean – the punishment is what the world says to him, yeah. which is you're a piece of shit. You, we don't like your behavior. And then he was, the next yeah. phase is... On the other hand, though, I'm so happy for Ariana, right? She's yeah. like laughing all the way to the bank. She's on Broadway. Yeah, now she did just... I, I saw yes, that yesterday. You've done Broadway. That's yeah. like a, a dream for an artist, right? Sure, it's a big deal. It's a huge deal. Do you have any plans of doing more Broadway or acting or anything else coming up? Yeah, I would love to. I hope this show kind of brings me back there, actually, the show that I do, my my solo show. Yeah, because you're you're really, really, really good at it. Do you love theater? 
Yeah, I do. It's where I started. It feels most like home for me. Uh, yeah, I do too. I love because live yeah. performance is like a whole other animal. Yeah, like be uh, doing it's like live. Doing this. Yeah, but doing live podcast is one thing, but like putting your face, like being there on uh, on stage in mm -hmm. front of an audience, it, it is a lot of pressure. Yeah. Uh, one million percent, I'm gonna be there. Can you tell my listeners like where? Yeah, the, where it's gonna be? I know it's I LA, sure but can. I forgot the name of the Dynasty Typewriter. Dynasty. I've never been to this one. You gotta come. Where is it? No, I will. One million percent. It's on Wilshire. It's by MacArthur there. Park, kind of. Oh, okay. It's like okay. Right over that line. I, and that's the that's the nice thing about Adam. Like, uh, if I say like I wanna do, I wanna go to the show, he goes and gets the tickets. He's so okay. sweet. I expect We're gonna to see you go there, see um uh what's his name uh oh my god uh, I forgot his name Brett you know Brett Goldstein from Ted Lasso yeah. I'm like madly in love with his work and he's gonna do a stand up here in a Pasadena on Sunday nice. We're gonna I told and, and Ed is like okay let's go like so sweet so. yeah you gotta but yours is shit. next for sure uh, yeah New York City the 14th of December the 22nd of December at Dynasty Typewriter here in L A and then again back in New York on the 18th of January in wow. Chicago January 20th do you ever take a break <laughs> yeah I actually have like three weeks in between each show oh my god yeah. what are you doing for for um, New Year I'm gonna be in a hot tub in Silver Lake. Wow, that sounds good. Yeah, with great company, I'm sure. With my ex. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so mm. do you believe in recycling relationships? Apparently, no. Oh, recycling it into yeah, a friendship. Yeah. No, but like if you're gonna be there with your ex, you're like giving it another shot. No, that's the only other thing is that what it, once the you're gonna like, be in a bathtub can... together. A hot tub, not a bathtub. A hot tub is a bath. <laughs> yeah, like I don't, I, I, I have never rekindled a romance with an ex. Once the romance is done, it's so now a friendship. So the two of you are gonna be on New Year's in a hot tub with and other people, but, with uh, other friends. Okay. Yeah. But if he tries something, you're like, no, he that's won't. It. He won't. No. Oh wow, you're very like determined. No, we're 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 family. We broke up ten years ago. We're oh like my close. God. We're like brothers. Oh my god. Okay. Well, yeah. that's a whole other. We need to do a whole other <laughs> episode, <laughs> guys. If you don't follow him, please go to Instagram, John Arthur Hill. Very chic on Instagram. December twenty for the New York audience is the fourteenth. Yeah. And for the LA audience, December twenty second, one million percent. Adam and I are gonna be there. You I are can't fantastic. Wait to see you I am so honored. I am so grateful. Thank you. I volunteer if you ever want a sidekick co-host for yes, your radio please show. Come. Count on me. I will I always be there because I love your work. I think you're fantastic. Back I'm at you. insanely honored. I brought you a Christmas gift. Oh shit. I'm gonna give you pleasure for Christmas. Oh my God. It's from my sex toy brand called Prazeres. Prazeres what? means pleasures can in I really Portuguese. Can I open it? Yeah, I brought you a few sex toys. Oh you can open God. them at home. You can use them by yourself <laughs> or with your friends. Can I open it now or you want me to open it later? It's up to you. You can open it later. I want to There's look. a bunch of, okay. It's a bunch of little sexy toys. Oh wow. Because, you know what, John, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I really want to normalize oh my conversations God. about sex. What a beautiful butt plug. I love it. Wow, that is gorgeous. You can it's a rosebud. You, well, <laughs> you can gift it or you can try yourself. But See, you know why I started a sex toy line? Because it drives me crazy out of my mind that this day and age it's such taboo. Well, this is gorgeous. Thank you. I can't wait to have this. I don't. I don't. You don't. You, oh, you can use it on. I'll use it. On <laughs> <laughs> Send pictures if you know. want. Actually, but now that I'm feeling it in my hands, I wonder. You know. Let me know. Feel could. free to send me like feedback. I feedback. Maybe. I'll try it. <laughs> okay. I'll try it. It was such a huge honor having you, John. You're amazing. You're incredible. Congratulations I am gonna look on at all this your other success. One. I'm sorry. Okay, go for it. I know this one time. is not even on sale yet. Oh it's God. the Black Diamond Bunny. What? I know. We have not. Sorry. It's, it's I, not. I'm just, I love gifts. It's going to be available soon. Jesus so Christ. So you're the very, very first one that puts wow. your hand on my black diamond bunny. Wow. So. <laughs> and I mean, you got to give kudos to a guy that is dating and is not intimidated by this crap, right? I love it. <laughs> no, that's a guy who understands what's up. Right? 
cute. Wow. Gorgeous. Let's, thank you, my love. There is more stuff in there, but you can look at it later. Okay. All right. All right. I'll wait till I get <laughs> So home. a little pleasure for you for your wow. holiday. Okay. I'm so grateful to you. This is amazing. You are amazing. Frazier's. And I know how busy you are. That, see, you're going to go to Brazil now. You know one yeah. word. I'm going to hook you up with my friend Leandro because Leandro is <laughs> dying to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I want to go to Rio. Yeah, let's go. Let's go together. Okay, let's fine. rock and roll in Rio together. Let's do a show. Deal, deal. <laughs> it was such an honor, and I know how busy you are. Thank so you. So I have to say thank you from the bottom of my of heart. Course. You're amazing. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, and I'll see you on the 22nd. This was a really fun cat on the loose, and for those of you guys who are listening, please go to our Instagram accounts and look at the videos, because if you don't know John, on top of being crazy... <laughs> talented and successful his major eye candy so you're welcome people <laughs> we love being around beautiful people right <laughs> yeah th it's such an ego boost thank you hey, happy holidays i'm sure you, you listen to this stuff every day <laughs> this was amazing thank you adam for amazing behind thanks the adam good luck Mwah. yay